Welcome to the Friday edition of Forecast Lab. We are drying out here in Texas. The upper level ridge starting to slide overhead, at least for a little while. Checking out the surface map, things are looking more normal for July. This is a very classic weather map. The only real anomaly is out in the northeast U.S. Not really any high pressure out there, but the thickness chart, the uh, thickness lines, these red dash lines, definitely show a cold air mass centered over the northeast U.S. And temperatures do reflect that with highs in the 60s this afternoon in Maine. Further to the south, a dry northeasterly flow affecting North Carolina and Virginia, and then down to the south stationary front through South Carolina. The Gulf is open, especially in the western part of the Gulf. You can see that onshore flow there in Texas and the moisture coming right up I-35 with dew points in the 70s. And thank you, Windows. Let me get that out of there. Okay, there we go. Southerly flow coming up, and that's our next Bear Clinic system. This is associated with some MCS activity in North Dakota. And we're going to expect that to come through the Great Lakes tonight and into tomorrow, and then storms for the northeast U.S. tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow night. In Arizona, big-time monsoon conditions out there. We're not really seeing that on the surface chart. If anything, we see a little meso high centered over Tucson. However, a mid-level system has been moving from Texas into New Mexico, and it should be in Arizona tomorrow, helping to keep that monsoon precipitation going. And then up in the northwest U.S., a cold air mass not really going anywhere. It's being eroded by the very strong heating in the desert. And that's much the same pattern that we've seen a couple days ago. Then up to the north in Nunavut Northwest Territories, a very strong periclinic system centered right about here and strong cold air advection working onto the coast of the Northwest Territories. You remember a couple of days ago, we had conditions near 80 right there, and now they're down to 45 with a strong north wind. And looking around Anchorage and Fairbanks, very classic weather for this time of year. Highs in the 60s with some showers over the higher terrain. Now, a week ago, we were dealing with floods in Central Europe. Now we've got some shocking and incredible footage coming out of central China where floods have hit Henan province very hard. And some of the video has just been incredible. Let's see what caused that flooding. 33 fatalities and 250,000 people displaced with these floods. So if you're looking for how it happened, you've definitely come to the right place. We've got the radar from China. And Henan province, that's going to be right here. So you want to kind of lock that into your memory. So this little notch right here in the China Sea, you're going to go west from there, and that's how you find that province. So this goes back to the 19th, and we run this forward at one-hour intervals. And you can see these rains get started, MCS clusters forming right there over the province. And if we run that forward hour to hour, you can see some locations, especially in the north part of the province, getting extensive training of cells. And then we get multiple occurrences of MCSs moving across. And finally, by yesterday, we start seeing some improvement. Let's zoom down to the individual radars. Yes, we've got those products. And here we're looking at the radar from Zhengzhou, the date and time is up here in the top right. The radar site located right here, and you can see that there are mountains up to the northwest. So we start out with some garden variety storms, and you can see that there's easterly flow, and you can kind of make out a little bit of rotation in the upper levels. Looks like maybe some sort of upper level low right there. Well, there's an MCS right there. That's one of the first of the storms 
impinging on the mountains right there. So the basins starting to fill up with water, The talking about the rivers and creeks, and a couple waves moving through of storms. Here comes another wave right across Zhangzhou there. Going into Monday afternoon, we go from bad to worse. The precipitation fields really start filling in. A lot more precip, and then they start moving a little bit to the northeast around later in the 21st. However, the rain is still coming down. Here comes another MCS coming up from the southwest. This cluster here is sort of stationary, and it just does not let up. We've got another cluster of storms up there in the foothills and the mountains. So or graphics definitely playing into this situation. However, as we get into Wednesday and Thursday, some improvement. So finally, they're getting some relief at this time. Here's a quick look at what the sounding looks like. This is in the middle of that event. Tropical moisture all the way up through that sounding, some heating, and very importantly, some easterly flow feeding into that storm complex. See that inflow right there? That means that these storms are being fueled from the east. And here's a look at the precipitable water. Some of you may find all this interesting. Others may be asking, why are we focusing on China? Well, this weather could happen in the U.S. We could certainly see that here. And some of the stuff we go over shows you some of the things to look for. Well, starting out, this is on the 20th, just as that flooding was starting up. Remember that little indentation right there in the bay? That Right there, you can go west from that, and that's how you find Henan Province. So that's going to be right in here. So starting out, we've got two and a half inch precipitable water in place. And with this typhoon coming up through Okinawa, we've got easterly flow out ahead of it, and that's advecting more moisture into that region, helping to recharge it so the downdrafts and outflow don't just shut things down. That's commonly what happens. Here's a somewhat more familiar look. There's Henan Province with the storm set up on the 20th, and if we look at the pressure field, we can see some ridging to the northeast. This is a little ridge there with high pressure over Korea and Japan. So that's helping to shunt that moisture and fuel eastward. So the typhoon is not, it's not really factoring into this, so don't worry about that too much. And if we run that forward, that easterly flow just persists. We get convective complex after convective complex forming, and also due to some more southerly flow aloft, we get isentropic lift over this ridge. So a couple factors there, the high precipitable water, the isentropic lift, because we are north of a frontal boundary. Let me run that back to the 20th. And that frontal boundary would be about right here, probably kind of a stationary front. And we do see that in the southern U.S. quite a bit during the summer. So high precipitable water, easterly flow that brings in moisture, and 850 millibar flow helping to recharge things also and provide some of that isentropic lift. Those are some of the things that can help produce a flooding situation like this. Speaking of rain and storms, we definitely got plenty of that in the southwestern U.S. Monsoon pattern is covering that region. The eastern part of New Mexico is getting some dry east-northeast flow, but further to the west, the monsoons are going. Now, this is on Tuesday evening. If we run this forward, you're going to see storms forming on the Mogollon Rim there just after dark, and those move into the Phoenix area early on Wednesday. Usually during the morning, right about this time, things are kind of quiet, that's typical of the monsoon, but you can see along the Mogollon Rim, storms once again firing up for Wednesday evening, and then we got this cluster moving into Phoenix Wednesday night. Now things quiet down again for Thursday morning, and you can see some cirrus debris moving over the area, and then we get storms forming about early afternoon. Lots of cells there, 
another round of storms moving into Phoenix. And yeah, that looks like a big one. And then that brings us to today. Cirrus debris moving out and more storms firing mostly around Prescott and Flagstaff. Not really so much for the Mokion Rim. So I'm not 100% sure we're going to have a repeat of this in the Phoenix-Tucson area, but can't really rule that out. Certainly for western Arizona, looks like good chances for thunderstorms. Well, big problems with wildfires in northern California. No surprise there. We knew it was going to be a bad season. That's the Dixie Wildfire about 100 miles north of Sacramento. The uh, affected area is 100,000 acres, which is 150 square miles, or for our friends in Europe, 400 square kilometers. So quite a vast amount of damage there. And further to the south, we've got the Tamarack Fire, kind of hard to see it, but that's it southeast of Lake Tahoe, putting out a modest smoke plume. That's another look that shows the extent of the smoke starting from this morning. So a lot of Idaho and northern Nevada affected. In fact, if you go back to this morning, yeah, check out northern Nevada there. That is all smoke. And that's definitely not going to be good for those with respiratory problems. A quick check of Texas shows very classic conditions for July. Not even the sea breeze is active. So that ridge definitely making a dent in the precip and only one little cluster up there near Longview and Texarkana. And since that's pretty much on topic, let's check out the mid-level 500 millibar heights and vorticity. There's our low pressure system that's going to add fuel to the fire there in Arizona. As that shifts west, we should see an increase in the precipitation in that region. And then over Texas, the 594 decameter contour right there outlining a small area of high pressure. So what's going to happen over this weekend will be influenced mostly by what happens to those features. So the upper level high continues to park over Texas, albeit a little bit weak. And then the system in Arizona unleashes more monsoon precip. We can see that the prevailing flow up to the north, main branch of the polar front jet running across southern Canada. So that'll help drive that MCS eastward through the Great Lakes over the weekend. And then going into next week, a little bit of a pattern shift. If we run this up to Tuesday, you will see the upper level high over the Great Plains, Colorado, Kansas, and the axis of that high right there all the way down into Florida, which puts all of the Gulf Coast under easterly flow and continued easterly flow into Arizona. So I'm not too sure that the monsoon is going to shut down just yet. And then getting to the end of next week, 597 contour breaks out. So it looks like some heat is going to get established in the high plains around midweek. Meanwhile, Texas, yeah, it will be hot. We're going to start seeing hundreds showing up in places like Oklahoma City, Amarillo, and Dallas. However, there is still hope when we're in these easterly flow patterns, we can be positioned to bring in easterly waves from the tropics. So it really depends on what is down here. Places along I-10, San Antonio, Houston, and maybe up to Waco could see a little bit of precip sometime next week. And of course, we've got a tropical system. Let me show you that. Yeah, this little disturbed area of weather in Florida, little tropical disturbance in that area. And it's looking like that may take root off the East Coast. However, since the subtropical ridge is trying to get set up in this area and we've got that northerly flow, that's probably going to push that out into the Western Gulf, and we could see that making its way into South Texas in several days. So if we run that forward, you can kind of see that circulation moving across the Bahamas on Saturday. And then some evidence of it moving across the Keys around Monday, and it may get picked up in that easterly flow and approach Texas. 
maybe around Thursday. So that'll be something to watch there, not expecting a hurricane. However, could be some rain down there. So that'll do it for our Friday edition of Forecast Lab. I want to thank our supporters, like our new supporter, Dude Dude. Yep, that's his nickname there, so thank you very much for the support. Anyway, I hope you all have a great weekend, and we'll see you Monday for the supporters and Wednesday for everybody else. Have a great one. Bye-bye.